click the bell icon to get latest videos from ekida hello friends in today's session we are going to study about bod that is biochemical oxygen demand and cod that is chemical oxygen demand now what exactly are these terms whenever i have certain material present in the water as impurities they can be organic or inorganic but if at all they are organic they will decompose and if they have to decompose they will take oxygen out of water what is water water is h2o o stands for oxygen that means water itself has oxygen in it this oxygen is actually taken by flora and fauna to prosper their life but from that this oxygen goes into the decomposition of organic matter let us see exactly how things happen in this session bod and cod over here first we are going to study about bod that is biochemical oxygen demand that bod waste water contains two types of organic matter biologically active or biologically degradable organic matter which can be oxidized by bacteria now when i have biologically degradable organic matter this organic matter will be oxidized easily now what do i mean by oxidize oxidize is a process it is oxidation oxidation always involves oxygen oxygen gets used up in the process of oxidation oxidation is nothing but usage of oxygen which should never happen in water because the water oxygen is preserved for the fauna and the fauna which are there in the water but this oxygen has been used for different reactions which are taken place in the water because of all the biodegradable waste products present in it biologically active organic matter is the one which can't be oxidized biologically dissolved oxygen and organic matter present in water sample are closely related to each other let us see the definition of bod the biochemical oxygen demand bod of water is a measure of amount of oxygen required for the biological oxidation of organic matter under aerobic conditions at 20 degrees celsius and for a period of 5 days what is it trying to say is if i have a period of 5 days i have temperatures 20 degree celsius so what is 20 degree celsius the optimum temperature for all the chemical processes to take place so at 20 degree celsius for 5 days if i have a water sample with me how much amount of oxygen will get used in these 5 days under aerobic conditions now what is happening over here it's the amount of waste that is present in water it is basically used to calculate the amount of waste that is present in water because that waste will eventually use up the oxygen and the oxygen level of the water will come down and since the oxygen level comes down we measure that oxygen level and when then we come to know how much waste is present in that water we have organic matter plus o2 on the reactant side so from where do we get the organic matter the organic matter which is present in the water so this organic matter is mixed up in the water plus o2 from where do we get the o2 the molecular formula of water is h2o so that o from the water is taken away and then that o2 is being used with the organic matter so the organic matter has a reaction or decomposes or gets oxidized all these are different terms of the reaction of the organic matter with oxygen which leads to in presence of of course microorganisms or we can also call these microorganisms as bacteria co2 plus h2o co2 is my carbon dioxide plus h2o BOD is directly related to the extent of pollution in wastewater and industrial effluents. The higher the BOD of a sample, the higher will be pollution caused by it. Drinking water should have BOD less than one. BOD should always be very less. If the BOD is less, then the organic matter or the organic content present in it is less. The number of bacteria present in the water is less, and overall the number of pollutants which are present. and the amount of pollution that is present in the water is less now let us see the principle of bod how actually bod works over here principle of bod the principle involved in the determination of bod is the first is the determination of dissolved oxygen by winkler's method initially second is following a period of 5 days at 20 degree celsius the sample is maintained at this temperature for the period of testing bod is do1 minus do2 
DO stands for dissolved oxygen of the sample 1 minus dissolved oxygen of the sample 2. What is happening over here? Let me explain you how actually BOD works. I take a water sample with me. This water sample is polluted. It has certain amount of bacteria, certain amount of organic matter in it. And I keep that water sample at 20 degrees Celsius in aerobic conditions for 5 days. On the first day before the starting the experiment, I will calculate the amount of dissolved oxygen present in it. After 5 days, I will come back to the same water sample and I will calculate the amount of dissolved oxygen present in it again. And BOD is DO1, it is dissolved oxygen which was there on the first day minus DO2 dissolved oxygen which was there on the fifth day. From this I can come to know how much oxygen has been reduced. The oxygen level has been reduced drastically and from that we can calculate our BOD. Over here I have DO1 is dissolved oxygen of diluted water sample immediately after its preparation. DO2 is dissolved oxygen of diluted water sample after incubation for 5 days at 20 degrees Celsius. Now let us see what exactly X is. X is the fraction of sample that is volume of sample upon total volume to which it was diluted. Now the sample which I am taking that won't be the entire sample. The entire water sample will be huge but I am just taking a part of it. It may contain high amount of organic matter or low amount of organic matter. We do not know it and that is the reason why we take this fraction X which is volume of sample upon total volume to which it was diluted. BOD is nothing but dilute oxygen of sample 1 minus dilute oxygen of sample 2 into volume of sample after dilution upon volume of sample before dilution. That means BOD is DO1 minus DO2 into X. Significance of BOD, the higher the BOD of sample, the higher the amount of decomposable organic matter in the sample. It is very important for us to know that if BOD is higher, if BOD is higher, that means the amount of oxygen which has been used up is higher and the amount of oxygen which has been used up is by organic matter. Organic matter and other decomposable bacteria are the ones which are using the oxygen. If amount of oxygen used up is higher, that means the amount of organic matter is higher. That means if the BOD is higher, the level of pollution in that water is also higher. Now let us see the uses of BOD. So therefore BOD gives an idea about the extent of pollution at any time in the sewage sample. We just take the sewage sample, we keep it for 5 days, we calculate the amount of oxygen that has been reduced and we can actually find out the BOD of it or the amount of pollution which is present in the water for it. Second, it helps in pollution control. So if I know that for a certain industry, the industrial waste has a very high BOD, I can actually go to the industry and ask them to put up a filtration plan so that will reduce the EOD and whatever the waste products are coming out from the industry which will eventually go into the fresh water rivers or which will eventually go into the sea will have less BOD and that means they will consume less oxygen from that river stream or sea for that matter. So this helps in controlling the pollution. Now let's start off with COD that is chemical oxygen demand. The amount of oxygen required by organic matter in a sample of water for its oxidation by strong oxidizing agent is known as chemical oxygen demand or COD of that sample. It is very necessary over here also to know that we are only dealing with organic matter. The amount of oxygen that an organic matter in water will need in presence of a strong oxidizing agent. That oxidizing agent can be anything. It can also be microorganisms which will help to remove oxygen from H2O and give it to organic matter for its decomposition composition is known as chemical oxygen demand that is COD. Principle of determination of COD, how exactly are we going to calculate COD? First we saw the calculations of BOD, now we are going to see the calculations of COD that is chemical oxygen demand. A known volume of sample is refluxed with a known excess of K2Cr2O7 solution in 50% H2SO4 in the presence of Ag2SO4 which is the catalyst and HgSO4. Over here K2Cr2O7 is a strong oxidizing agent as we all know for COD we need a strong oxidizing agent it can be in any form. BOD that wasn't necessary but over here in COD it is very necessary to have a strong oxidizing agent and over here we are using K2Cr2O7 as a strong oxidizing agent in acidic medium. It oxidizes the organic matter into CO2 and H2O. Let us see the reaction of it over here we do not have a proper reaction of it why because 
we do not know what actual organic matter is present in it. It can be in any form. It can be an aldehyde. It can be a ketone. It can be an alcohol. We do not know what the waste products are. But we always know what the organic matter is made up of. Organic matter is made up of first the most important thing is carbon. Second is hydrogen and at times we can also have oxygen. So we are in the reaction we have added all three of them in our reactant one that is carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. Now this also can be anything. This can be an alcohol, this can be an ether, this can be an ester, this can be an acid. It can be anything. We do not know the composition of it. I cannot say that I will definitely have two carbons, four hydrogens and one oxygen. I cannot say that. And therefore we have x, y and z, x stands for the number of carbons, y stands for the number of hydrogens and z stands for the number of oxygen. Plus x plus y by 4 minus z by 2 O2. Now this is very important. The number of carbons, hydrogens and oxygens present in the organic matter determine the amount of O2 that is the amount of oxygen which will get used or which will be used from the water. Do not confuse the oxygen of the organic matter with the oxygen of water. They are different. Over here I have C, X, H, Y and O, Z. That entire thing is a part of my organic matter. This determines the amount of oxygen which will be used from water. And that is X plus Y by 4 minus Z by 2 O2. This will form X times CO2 plus Y by 2 times H2O. Now let us see a reaction with an example. So over here I have the unreacted dichromate solution which is titrated against standard FAS solution. FeSO4 dot NH4 twice SO4 dot 6 H2O using ferroin as an indicator. At the end point the blue color changes to wine red. So over here I am just using my indicators to find out the COD and how actually the oxygen is being used up and once it gets used up the blue color changes to wine red color. So over here I have Cr2O7 minus 2 plus 14 H plus plus 6 electrons forming twice of Cr plus 3 plus 7 H2O. Over here I also will have Fe plus 2 forming Fe plus 3 plus my electron into 6. Let us add both these reactions and see what do we get. So now when we are adding a reaction, we simply add the reactant side and the product side and we try cancelling out stuff from the reactant side and the product side if that is possible. Let us see firstly if cancelling something is possible in this reaction and then we'll start adding the reaction. So over here I have six electrons on my reactant side or I have an electron into six on my product side. Always remember if you want to cancel something you cannot cancel a reactant with another reactant because we are adding the reaction. If I have 6 electrons on the reactant side over here and 6 reactants on the product side over here, that can get cancelled over here but not the reactant with a reactant. So always while cancelling, we will always cancel reactants with products. It's very important for us to remember. And luckily in this reaction, we have 6 electrons on the reactant side and 6 electrons on the product side which can easily get cancelled. Let us see, 6 electrons over here are getting cancelled with 6 into electrons over here. This and this gets cancelled and apart from that whatever is there gets added up. So over here I have Cr2O7-2 minus plus over here I have nothing to add so I will just put it as it is. Plus 14H plus over here also I have nothing to add. I will put it as it is. Over here this has got cancelled with this. Let us check the reactant of it. Okay over here I have Fe plus 2 so into 6, it is very important for us to calculate this 6 because this 6 is in multiplication with the entire bracket. So Fe plus 2 into 6 forms 6 Fe2 plus. Now I have calculated all the reactants which were present, cancelled out all the reactants which could get cancelled and this is my final addition of the reactants that is Cr2O7 minus 2 plus 14H plus plus 6 Fe2 plus. This is my reactant side. Let us now calculate the product side. Over here I have 2 Cr plus 3, 2 Cr plus 3 plus I have 6 into Fe plus 3 so 6 into Fe plus 3. This electron 6 electron has already got cancelled with this. The only thing I'm remaining is plus 7 H2O. So this plus 7 H2O comes over here. 
So now this is the addition of my reactant side and this is the addition of the product side. So while adding two reactions, what are the two most important things that we need to take into consideration is the first one, cancel out whatever is necessary and cancel out whatever can get cancelled. Cancellation can only be done from the reactant side to the product side and whatever is remaining, you just add it up. Significance of COD, it helps in designing the water treatment plant. So now if I know the chemical oxygen demand of a certain type of pollutant which I have. So the industries first calculate the amount of COD that they have, the amount of strong oxidizing agents which are already present in their industrial waste. So first what would they do, they'll put a filtration plant or water cleaner plant and this plant will do nothing but remove all the strong oxidizing agents from it, remove all the organic matter from it. So even if the waste goes into the rivers, even if the waste goes into the streams, it will not take away the oxygen from the rivers and the streams and that is the reason why the oxygen content of the water will be well preserved but for that we should know the amount of oxygen which will eventually get used up and that is determined with the help of COD. It helps in deciding the disposal of domestic effluents in various types of water streams. It also decides in different water streams which kind of disposal can go. It helps in reducing the amount of organic matter which is present in the streams and also the amount of strong oxidizing agents which are present in that water. So here in this session we studied about BOD and COD. We also studied about the principles of both of them and we studied the actual reactions which take place. We also studied how it is helpful for us reducing the pollution in the water. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay tuned to Ikeda and subscribe to Ikeda.